I think it's time to be a little bit honest and to say clearly the referees are afraid to give decisions for Chelsea. People didn't like the way I refereed because I did. I had the balls to make decisions and had to make the decision whether it's the first minute or the 90 plus ninth minute. Yeah, I would make the same call, and if that upset people, then so be it. I used to be petrified sitting in the chair, right. thinking, "Come on, the guy goes down the box, like, give the pen, give the pen. Oh, he's give the pen. Are you happy, Daisy? He's give the right. pen." Right. Let's let's start with the obvious, Thomas. The handshakes and the the bust up. How do you? The handshake again? Well, the sort of bust up and oh. arguing. Well, you know, I just compared it to two players who had a, have a bit of fight on the on the on the field, but nothing happens. Nobody gets injured, and and then the players, if you have a hard tackle, a fair tackle, and you don't go later and apologize, and there's no need. It's, it's Premier League football, and the two managers got involved today because both of us were fighting for our teams, and that was it. Nobody got insulted, nobody got hurt. We didn't have a fist fight and something. So. For me, it's not a big deal. It was part of it today, and it, it, it boiled, of course, and it heated up, but nothing bad. And it was, I don't know, it was today was part of the game. It's like this. Give us a handshake for peace for you. It says Thanks. handshake for peace, all of us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Andy? Um, have you, oh, don't suppose you've had a chance to talk to Antonio since, but just, not yet. Will you? Do you have any. Do you think it's no, I don't have an accent. I, I, I'm, I'm sure he will not have. We, 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 we fought both for our teams, and uh, it happens. It's, it's so close here. It was so. It was such an intense match, and the, the, the both uh, dugouts are very, very close, and so it got a bit heated from it, both of us. You enjoyed it, didn't you? Yes, and, and I think he enjoyed it as well. It was nothing <laughs> bad, guys. Nothing bad. Is that? Do you have more of a problem with the referee? Um, today? Yeah, today? Absolutely, yes. Generally as well, because some of the fans think that he's made a few bad decisions against Chelsea. I don't think that some of the fans think that. Uh, I, can, I can assure you that the whole dressing room of us, every single person, thinks that. And uh, I cannot understand how the first goal is not offside. And I cannot understand since when uh, players can be pulled by their hair stay on the pitch, pull other people's hair, stay on the pitch and attack in the last corner. This is for me without any explanation and I, 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 I don't want to accept it and, and uh, I mean this is for me, <laughs> I have no words for it. I'm, I, I'm curious what, what the explanation is for that but both goals should not stand and then it's a fair result because we were, we were brilliant and we deserve to win. This is my point of view. Go to the, sorry, Nizar, go, go to the back no. next. Um, Thomas, is part of the, the frustration and the emotion, what you just said there, that you feel like you've, you've lost two, two points that you deserve to win that game and, and that added to what happened at the end of the game? Yeah, but you, you know, it happens. This happens, uh, this happens during a life as a football coach and as, as a team and in football, as, as football players, that you sometimes get caught in the last minute and, and we will hopefully have it in the season that we will steal some points in the last minute and, and be decisive. This can happen. and. Uh, but it cannot happen on a, in, in when we have VAR on, on this kind of level. It cannot happen that, that goals are allowed that, that are simply uh, irregular goals. This is the frustration and this is, this is unacceptable. Um, I think we know what we did. The players know how, how, what impact uh, they, they, and what input they, they, they put into this game mentally, physically. We were so sharp, we were so so fully on and, and, and played played a brilliant match on, on the second. What a what a step up for us from, from the first from the first day in Everton. And um, yeah, it's it's I'm very disappointed for, for, for the players that they don't get the reward and uh, that they should have and it's it's actually down to to, to incredible decisions. T Thomas, you're you're talking about this game in particular and issues with the decisions in this game yeah. in particular. There, there have been issues with this re referee that mm. fans think have gone on for quite a while yeah. now. Not do only you, the fans. Do you, so you share that? that this is <laughs> they, they, uh, you know the players, they, 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 they know what's going on and then they, they're on the pitch and they know it and again it's like this. Are they worried when this is referee yeah. takes course. Okay, Adam? And um, I want to say it again. Referees are afraid to give decisions for Chelsea. Thomas, um, 
lead this referee, you say you know you, you understand that there's an issue, the players understand it. Some of the fans have said that they don't think he should referee Chelsea. Maybe it would be better. Maybe it would be better, but honestly, we also have VAR to help to help making the right decisions. Since when can players be pulled at their hair? Since when is that? And if he does not see it, I don't blame him. I didn't see it. But we have people at VAR who check this, and then you see it, and then, and then what? And then how can this not be a free kick, and how can it not be a, be a red card? How? Uh, is there any? This does not even have to do with the referee um, um, in, in this case. If he sees, if he does not see something, that's why. That's why we have we have uh, people to check if if there's a, if there's a decisive uh, error going on. Things that with Lee, which which, which was which is fine, which is was pretty. Open. And for me, I, I I made a few mistakes as VR. Well. I missed the stupid hair pull up bloody Chelsea Tottenham, which was pathetic from my point of view. And it's one of them where. If I had my time again, what would I do? I'd, I'd send Ansh to the screen. I think that I knew he was going to have a send to the screen. I've, I've said this before, is that he's cautioned both managers. He's had a hell of a game. It's been such a tough game end-to-end. And I said to Andy afterwards, I said, I, did, I just didn't want to send you to the screen after what's gone on in the game. And Andy said, it doesn't matter what goes on in the game. You know, and, 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 I, and it's easy now. And again... I didn't want to send him up because he's, he's a mate as well as, as a referee, and I think I didn't want to send him up because he didn't want any more because what he already had. And 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 he's he's big and bold enough and ugly enough to know for well that if he's got on the screen, he's got on the screen for a reason. And mm-hmm. I think that again, lucky enough for me, it happened. I think the second or third match round never happened again. If someone pulls around now, it's dead easy. It's just it's just mm-hmm. a, it's just it's what? just a, just a brainwave by me. Just a, a really bad, really really bad call by me, and it kind of affected me as VR going forward. Probably. Right. Missed a few games because I think if you, I said before about, you know, if you're a referee, you te- get out of the limelight. That was a major, major error. And I think from my point of view, I was so disappointed because I was kind of told to start the season of being dedicated to VAR. If there's live games on a Sunday half past four, because I'm dedicated to be VAR, that's the kind of games we'd be involved in, which was great. That was a 4.30 game. I've missed a hair pull in like 90 plus three. And Sod's Law, you know what, you, you know, you know, you, you miss it and straight away goes for the corner and you go and equalise. If, yeah. yeah. if they don't equalise, if they don't equalise, if they end up winning 2-1, it goes no away, one's yeah. bothered about yeah. the air pull. Yes, I'll get a bit of a volicking because yeah. I've missed the hair pull and my process was bad and I should have sent him to the screen. But if they don't score from it, it's not a big issue. But I knew for well then I'd be stood down the week after. I'd have to take a bit of time off because it just wasn't for me. Right, so now to a breaking story, uh, the fallout from uh, the clash between Antonio Conte and Thomas Tuchel uh, when Tottenham played Chelsea at Stamford Bridge uh, 10 days ago. We're now at the stage where essentially the working is explained, uh, the explanations are released for why those decisions were made, why the managers were given the punishments that were handed out last week. Um, A reminder for you what what those punishments were. Thomas Tuchel, a one-game touchline ban and a £35,000 fine. And for Antonio Conte, a £15,000 fine, no touchline ban. So here, here are some of the key points from the explanation that's been given by the FA's independent commission. So they say it was quite clearly Thomas Tuchel who instigated the confrontation between himself and Antonio Conte by choosing to grip Conte's hand and jolt him back after Conte had passed him by. And Tuchel gripping Conte's hand for the reason that he gave, which was that Conte didn't look him in the eye, was simply not justifiable. Uh, Cursory handshakes are a common occurrence at the end of highly charged football matches and there exists no obligation for one person to look the other in the eye whilst shaking hands. Uh, Conte did react aggressively to Tuchel's actions, but the commission didn't consider him to have uh, hugely overreacted given the circumstances. And while certain aspects of Conte's behaviour could be considered as being improper, indeed he admitted as much, the commission considered Tuchel to be largely culpable for the incident and unanimously felt that this ought to be clearly and definitively reflected in the level of sanction imposed on Tuchel and Conte. So Tuchel with a £35,000 fine and one game touchline ban and Conte with a £15,000 fine and no a touchline ban. So what happens next? Well, it's really up to Chelsea to decide if they want to appeal the one-match ban that's been issued to Thomas Tuchel. If no appeal from Chelsea, he will miss the game against Leicester on Saturday. If they do appeal it, well, that one-match ban continues to be suspended until the appeal is heard. So those are the, the written reasons, the explanations given uh, by the FA Independent Commission as to uh, the sanctions handing out to Thomas Tuchel and Antonio Conte uh, after uh, their clash on the touchline when uh, Tottenham played Chelsea at Stamford Bridge 10 days ago. Mike Dean has now admitted that he got the Cucurea Romero incident wrong. 
Does that add to your frustration, or do you think it's actually a good thing that VARs are now admitting their mistake? As I am not frustrated, as I told you, yes, it, cannot, course, it, cannot, it cannot add to my frustration. <laughs> um, what was the question? Is it, a, is it a good thing that referees and the VARs are, are now admitting their mistakes, or does it make you well, even more annoyed? Uh, Hopefully, I'm not too honest. But if you, if if the mistake is that big and that obvious, what's what's the chance of not? What's the point of not admitting if the whole world sees it? I mean, I, I struggle a little bit to 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 be fully impressed by the statement. I have to say, it is so clear and obvious that I cannot, still cannot understand how a, a referee cannot make the decision that was the right decision. Just one final question from me. I think everyone in this room appreciates that you're, you know, a real competitor in the heat of battle, but you're also very down to earth and you've got a very good sense of humour. You'll have seen the video a lot now of you and Antonio Conte shaking hands last Sunday. When you see it, when you see it put to music, you know, does, does, does it make you laugh? What do your course. friends think? What does your wife think? Of course, of course, of course we laugh. It's very important to laugh about ourselves and of course we laugh. And I was laughing in the dressing room because it was the heat of the match and it was for me still it was not that bad it was a handshake and it was a bit of too long and too heavy handshake i admit it but no harm was done and uh, at least from my side and he spoke italian to me so i never know and we didn't insult each other so i think we we couldn't i think the thing would have been very very quickly uh, would have ended if there were not 20 People around us that that make the look that make the thing look much worse than it actually was. But you're right. I mean, if you if you if you have reaction like this, you need to live with a with a reaction towards it. And of course, we laugh. I laughed about myself. Have you seen the Strictly Come Dancing one? Is that Sorry, one? the Strictly Come Dancing one. Is that one of the ones you've seen? <sighs> I saw quite <laughs> some a, because I can show every, you if you want to see every it. everybody makes fun of me, of course, here in the building, as you can imagine, and it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Yourself. What's your view on that? We were brilliant. We were absolutely brilliant. Um, sorry, I have to say, but both goals cannot stand. Absolutely cannot stand. And it's only one team who deserves to win. It's us. We were absolutely brilliant. And I'm sorry for my team that they don't get what they deserve. What did you object to on both goals? What was your complaint? First of all, it's a clear foul on Kai Havertz in the in, in the build-up. A clear foul, like. Uh, uh, we had one tactical foul from Rhys James, got straight yellow. I don't know how many tactical fouls Heuberg and, and Ben Tancur did today. Nothing happened. Clear foul on Kai Havertz, OK, situation goes on and on and on. Then it's clear offside from Richarlison. He's in the line of the shot. He even goes to the ball. He does not touch the ball. Edu cannot see the ball. They check it. It's clear offside. And since when can we pull hair on a football field? Since when is that? And we check it and nothing happens. We don't need to check anymore. It's ridiculous. Does that only add to your frustration and feeling hard done by that you were 2 1 with literally it moments to go? It is, is the frustration. That's the only frustration. I'm the happiest I'm the happiest coach on earth because we played a fantastic match. We were absolutely brilliant. We dominated ninety minutes. We were sharp, we were hungry, we were like in all areas of the pitch, so disciplined and so full of quality. Like it was it was a top, top, top performance. And uh, I'm 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 sorry for my players. Last one. Thomas, the referees have been given a direction to let the game flow more and maybe mm. not punch every foul. Is this sort of thing that you see today, the, the new reality, players and fans got to get used to the fact that some fouls won't be given? Some fouls won't be given? Yeah, but when it's a we have still some rules, and uh, and I'm 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 very surprised when suddenly is a 50-50 challenge with Harry Kane uh, in the build-up to the last goal, and suddenly it's a, it's a, it is it is worth whistling because nobody from from nobody from 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 the players from Tottenham expected a free kick because it was not a free kick, but suddenly it's a free kick. When we did when when Reece James did the tactical foul, it was a yellow card. How many tactical foul did Hoiberg do today? He hit Reece James in his neck in front of both benches. The force official told me, we'll, we'll go back to this, it's advantage, we will go back to it. Did he go back to it? No, he did not. We had a yellow card. Ben Tancur is a three, four, five, six tactical fouls. It's a clear foul on Kai Havertz, who goes towards goal in, in, in the next attack. It stands, it goes, and it, it's a build-up for, for, for the 1-1. One, one. 
it's huge, huge misinterpretation of, of, of situations. I'm happy to let the game go, but then let it go in every direction, please, and, 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 and not like this. I mean, this is, um, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's what it is today, and uh, it will not go away. I mean, I, I don't even know if uh, I will get punished for all my, for all my, for all my sentences now, maybe. Yeah. It's always the same. I think so. Okay. Yeah. Finish it there. I think you, you yeah. Okay. Like to to Sorry. I think you might not be able to go to Leeds. No. So, good. I cannot. <laughs> I cannot. I cannot coach, but but mm. the referee can whistle the next game. Good. Cheers, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. Thomas. Cheers, Thomas. Hundred percent, and like I said last week that they've got this massive new hub for the VR, which was obviously getting done when I was I was still there. Starter it was, and then it's all right having the facility, but if you haven't got the people to do the job in the facility, what's the point of having the facility in the first place? Yeah. So no, it, it will get better, and I think in the end you they will they will train people to be dedicated VRs. I think they will. I think I'll, they have to. I mean, obviously, I tried it with when Lee and me and Lee both tried it. Um, Lee was done it eighteen months. I done it for six months. So I think simulation. It's not. It's an exaggerated problem. It's not really a problem in English. Oh yes. Yeah. Oh yes. Yeah. Oh yes, it is. Oh yes, it is. But I don't make campaigns. So you always think there's a campaign against you? Yes. No, it's not against me because I, I'm not on the pitch. Against Chelsea, yes. Against Chelsea, yes. You know, in the last couple of weeks, do you want me to tell you? the two most important things that happened in my matches. <coughs> Philippe, in my matches, in my opinion, Philippe Luiz and Eden Hazard should be now or could be now with broken legs. These are, the, for me, the two crucial things of, of, of my matches in the last two or three weeks. Philippe Luiz and Eden Hazard, they could be in hospital now with broken legs. And you are speaking about Gary Cahill, against the uh, Wool City with the result 2-0 and you are speaking about uh, West Ham uh, with the result 2-0 should be 5-0 and today penalty points no penalty no points but you also forget other things because uh, Man City Crystal Palace goal is not offside you don't you don't speak a lot about it Man United Newcastle 0-0 a penalty, a red card for Mata, no penalty. So you don't speak also about other things. Because we are in such a bad moment, I think you shouldn't be afraid to be also honest. Because I think it's time to be a little bit honest and to say clearly the referees are afraid to give decisions for Chelsea. And um, I want to say it again, referees are afraid to give decisions for Chelsea. Why? Because when they give, there is always a question mark from you. There is always a question. There is always a critic. So we are always punished. And and again, I repeat. So I want to make it clear again because I don't. I'm not. I don't want to be offensive. I don't want to be uh, non-polite. I don't want to put in cause the dignity of, of of the people. But I repeat, the referees they are afraid to give us decisions. And when you are top, you want to see people come down. When people is down, give us a break and be honest and be loyal with us because the team, the team deserves that. And the Will you explain to me how that was offside? No, I'm asking you, seriously. Explain offside to me, it made no sense. He said, I missed the stupid hair pull at Chelsea versus Tottenham, which was pathetic from my point of view. I said to Anthony afterwards, I just didn't want to send you to the screen after her, what has gone on in the game. I didn't want to send him up because he's a mate as well as a referee. And I think I didn't want to send him up because I didn't want any more grief than he had already had. He's obviously <gasps> talking about Anthony Taylor, the referee, on the day there. Nadem is back with us as well. I think Nadem's face says it all, actually. Yeah. <laughs> mm. uh, things you're not supposed to say out loud. Um, but, yeah, I, I'm not sure about that at all. I think to be saying how he's a mate and how it's affecting the job that you're doing, I think it's a very dangerous thing to do, unless, you know, we've missed the sort of context around it. But it just seems ludicrous. And I remember watching that game in real time and thinking... 
I've not really seen someone get their hair pulled before, but it kind of feels like an offence. So the fact that they've made the <laughs> wrong decision and he's trying to protect his friend as well, you know, these guys are supposed to be working together to make the game more fair, not working together to make sure that they don't have to do too much within a match. So I don't love that. I'm sure he's going to have to walk that one back in a few days' time. And I'll be very interested to see what Anthony Taylor says, whether he even pretends to even know this guy, or it's a case of, <laughs> yeah, he's right, this is the way we do things. Why has he said this, Stevie? Mm -hmm. I can understand that if it's tongue-in-cheek, because he's saying that he missed it on the VAR, right? If he's missed it on the VAR, how can he send Anthony Taylor to the screen if he's missed it, if he's the VAR? <laughs> that makes sense, doesn't it? He's Sorry, saying he missed it. So... It, be, what I, came I first, the chicken or the egg? Well, exactly. I'd be interested to, to, to see the context of how he's saying this. Because if he's saying it tongue-in-cheek, well, he he's had such a bad day, I don't want to say... Pathetic, from my point of view. It seems quite a strong thing Well, to exactly. Say. So the statement he makes is, is kind of... It conflicts a lot of things he said. Because he's told you right off the bat he missed it. That's why I'm saying, how can you send somebody to the VAR to the screen if you've not seen something? So it, it's, it's kind of all jiggled up here. It's not great anyway, is it, Ali? Because let's say, at well, the, at the lesser put, end... Let me put it a different way. OK. If, if it's not tongue-in-cheek I mean. and he's actually saying it, then it's an absolute joke. Right. And he's, he's so let's go joke. down that one. What if it isn't tongue-in-cheek? Well, it's a big, it's a joke. It's mm -hmm. an absolute disgrace. We sit here and talk about, you know, the referees make decisions at the time, you know... Um, coming from the right place, it's what they thought at the time, there's no skullduggery, you can trust referees. We're, we, we're constantly talking about decisions, and I guess I can only talk for myself. I absolutely 100% think referees make decisions at the time on what they see and, and for no other reason than what they think is the right thing. But now, after hearing if that's true, then it just, it just tells you that actually there are things that are not quite what they should be. Because it would be a stupid thing to say tongue-in-cheek, uh, wouldn't it? Oh, he's my mate. It's not really funny, is it, if it's tongue-in-cheek? No. Well, I... Well, if, 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 well I'm looking for trouble, if, I, if I'm looking for comedy, I'm not going to Mike Dean. I, <laughs> but, but, but it just feeds into the paranoia. It feeds into the hysteria. It, it, it feeds into... Wait a second. If this guy's behind closed doors because they're friends... Now they're colluding to make certain decisions or not make certain decisions because you don't want to put your mate, quote unquote, in a tough position. Then it opens up a whole world of conversation that we do not want to go down. We don't want to go down the path of questioning every VAR decision or every time that a VAR official doesn't call the referee over and say, well, are they friends? Are they good buddies? Is this a tough decision for the referee to make? And so, therefore, is, why is this guy not going over? It, it takes you down a path that is dark and where you're not going to like the answers that you find because those, those answers that you find will suggest that there is something behind the game that controls the matches and it's not just what we see on the field. Don't want to go down that path. I want to still believe that the referees, when they're out on the field and when they are in VAR, they're doing the best that they can under the circumstances, that sometimes they get the call wrong because they're human, so be it. But not because they're friends. Next, we've heard a quote and some words from a referee, yeah. another former referee, that uh, we wanted to get your <laughs> opinion on. <laughs> Cucurella Romero incident last season, Mike Dean saying that he didn't want to send Anthony Taylor up to the pitch side screen because he's a mate as well as a referee. I think I didn't want to send him up because I didn't want any more grief than he'd already had. Have you ever tried to look after your friends in the job? I don't get this word. I know he's backtracked lately about mates. And I never had mates. They were not me mates. They were me colleagues. But they were not me mates. I don't understand this terminology that he's used. And at the end of the day, the referees have got a duty to perform the laws of the game. Yes, we have tolerance levels. Yes, we can, you know, some challenges, we might agree that it's a red. Sometimes we agree it's yellow. But where we've got a clear act of, of, of holding of a hair and it wasn't punished because he didn't want to give it because the referee was having a hard game or he didn't want to upset his friend. This, you know, is absolutely nonsense for me. Just follow the laws of the game. If he does his job, and that's probably why he got removed some months later, you know, the PGML quickly removed him as a VAR because clearly Mike Dean wasn't that good of a VAR. He was a good referee, but I don't believe he was a good VAR. He's come out now, Mike Dean, and said it was all 
<laughs> out of context. Yes. Well, you're allowed to sleep One on it. One out of now. proportion. You're allowed to sleep <laughs> on it and change your mind. <laughs> well, he should have just kept his, well, he should have just kept his trap <laughs> shot. You know, I mean, he was one of the most... Uh, <laughs> Animated referees, particularly towards the end on the field when he was making decisions and stuff. But you know, Mark, Mark's right. Like, you got to take this matey matey thing out of it. it it's, it's colleagues, it's professionalism, it's big business, it's hard and fast decisions. Sometimes right, sometimes wrong, uh, sometimes subjective. But to even come out, talk about this, air it on a on a very public network. And then backtrack and say it was just all out of context when the PGMOL are now sort of scratching around trying to cover their backside is, is just ridiculous. Mike Dean this week, who is standing by for a little bit of a green, because you've been doing a little bit of podcasting this week. You've been in Simon Jordan's podcast up front, Mike, and it, it was a fascinating listen. Now, we'll talk about the more human siding of kind of refereeing and officiating in a short while, but you know what's caused the controversy. You know what's causing all the talk out there, plenty of articles, plenty of people having their say online as well. That game last season, right near the start of the season between Chelsea and and Tottenham. Chelsea are leading 2-1. It ends up being 2-2. Just before, and this is the real key talking point, just before Harry Kane's equaliser, Chelsea had this huge, huge appeal for a penalty. Christian Romero pulling Mark Cucurea's hair. Now, let's put this into context. Anthony Taylor, the referee, you're on VAR that day. What happened? Talk us through what happened and what should have happened. Well, what happened is I've seen, I've seen the incident, um, looked at it, uh, numerous occasions, probably too many times. Yes, he's pulled his hair. Was it a violent act? Probably not, but he shouldn't pull his hair. Probably should have sent Anthony to the screen, never. That book stops with me and I should have sent him. So it's a Why, why didn't you? For those who, who haven't read yeah, it, haven't well, heard. It's funny because that's all been blown out of context because what I've said is not old news. It's been out in, the, in, in news reports before, maybe four or five months ago. So it's not new news. Um, and referring to as a mate, I mentioned to the guys before that what you've got to look at it in context is that when you, you might not like some guys in your refereeing group, but when, you're in, when you get a game on a weekend, there's four of you in the middle, it's the VR and the AVR, and that's them six people, they're your mates for the day. You might play in a professional team, I said to Clinton before, there might be 11 players, and you might not like three or four of them. But in, on the, at three o'clock on a Saturday afternoon, they're your mates, and you want your mates to do well. So the mate thing has been like blown all out of proportion, to be fair, but I want to support the referee as much as I can, and that's what you do as a VAR. Yes, it was wrong, and I should have sent him to the screen, but to say I didn't send him because he's a mate is an absolute farce, and it's just been all blown out of, out of proportion, to be honest with you. Just people trying to make a story. You just, and obviously, we know probably Andy Taylor probably wasn't having his best game, but why would you not, se why would you not send him um, to the monitor to have a look? I think I said to you before that it had both managing, uh, both managers been cautioned. It cautioned about eight or nine players, um, and I'll try to protect the referee, not because he's been met, because... Yeah. I tried to protect the referee. It was wrong, and, and obviously I paid the price. Didn't have a game for three weeks after that, so I did pay the price. The book stopped to me, and it was a bad mistake by myself. But Mike, is it not your duty uh, in, in your role with the VAR in that situation to uphold the integrity of it the is. game, to uphold the integrity of officiating, regardless of your relationship with Anthony Taylor, regardless of the fact he's a friend? In that instance, you've got to put friendship. Surely, if you're being professional, 100%. right to one side. Why 100%. Didn't you? And the word I've used probably not the wrong words. If I said colleague, it's a bit different because mm. you use the word friend. Everything always is your best mate. He's not my best mate, <laughs> but just mates on the day because when you go out as a team of six you want to look after your mate in the middle that's what you do the liners do exactly the same the fourth man does the same the ref will be a look after the line is exactly the same book stops me should have sent him it's simple as that but i would encourage them to do go out to the parking lot mm -hmm. hide you wait for the referee to come out there, get into his little car, and you follow him home. So you tweet his address, and you let the good people fool him and take matters in their own hands. Obviously, don't go and do that, please. Hey, you do whatever you like. We can't condone anything of the sort. No, we can't. Live! Live! It's live!